wireless earbuds are almost as abundant as standard IEMs, but few audiophile brands have released true wireless earbuds. The technology is there, but for one reason or another, audiophiles don't have much choice in the matter. Peacock is an IEM brand that makes a colorful assortment of IEMs from various price brackets. In conjunction with Linsol, they are now releasing The Flight, their first true wireless IEMs. Linsol asked if I wanted to test and review The Flight. Of course, I said yes. They sent me what appears to be the pre-production unit. I was not told about the pricing for the flight initially, but we'll talk about that later. Let's take a look at the first pre-production and soon-to-be-released-on-Kickstarter product I've ever reviewed. The gist of Linsol and Peacock's marketing is that the flight is supposed to bring you audiophile-level sound in a wireless earbud. Peacock says that they spent over two years testing and engineering the flight. The flight has a number of features, including a proprietary driver, touch controls, IPX4 rating, intelligent noise reduction, Bluetooth 5.2, Aptex, AAC, and SBC codec support. Peacock says that each and every flight is handcrafted from start to finish, which is impressive. Peacock says that the flight will provide up to 24 hours of listening time when you factor in the charging case. Evidently, you can listen up to 6 hours at a time before the batteries are drained on the earbuds. It seems that the noise reduction Peacock referred to is regarding the microphone. They claim this technology will reduce up to 30 decibels of background sounds during phone calls. Unfortunately, the flight does not have active noise cancellation, which is a feature that you may miss if you've ever used it on other IEMs like the Apple or Sony brands. Another issue is that the flight does not currently have a companion application. Peacock does not say how the flight is tuned. I have no idea what to expect for its sound signature. Overall, the features seem fairly run-of-the-mill. The only notable differences from other wireless earbuds is the handmade nature of the flight and, purportedly, the audiophile-grade tuning. Because this is essentially a pre-production unit, I have to keep my criticisms somewhat restrained. I assume that when the flight takes off to Kickstarter, there may still be time to refine some elements. The flight is a small IEM. In fact, it is shaped like a lot of IEMs on the market. This is a breath of fresh air among the wireless earbud market. The Apple-style earbuds and bulky, cheap, off-brand alternatives leave a lot to be desired. And Sony's wireless earbuds, packed with Sony's proprietary technology, have achieved an IEM-like design only with the most recent release. So, to see that the flight is not the typical wireless earbud design is something I'm quite happy for. The flight will ostensibly come in five designs. Linsol sent me the black and gold version. The flight is smooth to the touch. There's not a sharp edge or unkempt protrusion anywhere. The paint job is immaculate. You might not be able to see it in the video, but the flight has a bright, flashy design. It's certainly an attention grabber. The flight does not have any physical buttons. Instead, there's one touch-sensitive center area on each earbud. You tap on either for playback control and answering calls. The flight comes with a charging case that looks eerily similar to the original Apple AirPod case. The flight case, however, seems to be a little less dense. It's not as heavy as an AirPod Pro case, and its plastic feels a little thinner. Charging is done through USB-C. This IEM comes with a charging cable and spare set of silicone ear tips. As for comfort, the flight is as comfortable as many other IEMs I have worn. It sits securely in my ears. I can wear the flight for three hours without needing a break. Passive noise isolation is about average. The ear tips negate some ambient room sounds, but typing on a keyboard and cars driving by will still come through. If there's one issue I have to point out, it's the charging case. I think the case could use a bit of tweaking. I'm not so concerned about the thin plastic, although it would be nice if they could make it a bit more dense. Instead, my complaint is with the placement of the flight within the case. I can imagine that some people might have a difficult time getting the flight out of the case. If you have large fingers or suffer from arthritis or don't have dry hands, it can be a little frustrating trying to get this IEM out. You're forced to pinch on a very narrow surface area of the earbuds, which themselves are pretty slippery. Just food for thought. Overall, the flight's design is catchy. Its accessories are nothing extravagant, its build is sturdy, and comfort is perfectly agreeable. 
I tested the flight using my iPhone 12 Pro Max and the LG V30. Because the flight has both AAC and Aptex, you'll get native codec compatibility with both Android and iOS. I listened to my test playlist through Amazon Music HD. The flight apparently will go into pairing mode as soon as you open the case and pull one of the IEMs out. If it has not already been paired to a device, you will be able to connect to your source immediately. Connection for me was fast. I don't know if there is multi-point connection. Peacock currently does not have a manual, and the only way for me to force connection to different devices was to turn Bluetooth off on one while I paired to the other. Once the first earbud is paired to your source, you can pull out the second earbud and it will automatically pair with the first. Or at least that's how I think it works. It's possible that both earbuds connect separately to the source device. I just don't know and I can't tell because there's no manual. Anyway, another bit of good news. Throughout my test, I felt that the flight got substantially loud. Seldom, maybe twice, did I have to resort to maximum volume for a track. The flight also does not exhibit audible noise or hiss through the Bluetooth connection, and this was both through AAC and Aptex. From my listening test, it appears that the flight has a sub-bass roll-off, but a fairly neutral mid-bass. In Mountains by Hans Zimmer, the flight could not fully recreate the sub-bass rumble that should be audible from the beginning of the song. Only at maximum volume was the flight able to represent the rumble. Transience was fairly quick. When the crescendo hit, the organ melded with the other instruments, but I could still hear it without difficulty. The rolling thunder effect was underemphasized and did not at all overpower the other elements. When the vocals chimed in, they started from the background until they were about two steps ahead of the instruments. In Conquer by Overwork, there's a rolling marble sound at the beginning. It is supposed to pan from right to left to center. The flight did recreate the sound of rolling marbles, but none of the panning. There are multiple drums in this track, and the flight clearly rendered all of them. Their impact was hard, but not sharp. Each drum strike had a fast transience, and did not meld with subsequent drum strikes. The synth was not harsh or piercing. I listened to several hip-hop songs, including Pure Water, New Patek, Relit In, and Uproar. On each occasion, the flight could not fully present the subwoofer effect. It sounded like the subwoofer was in another room altogether. Mid-bass was neutral, however, and each drum strike was clear and precise. The vocals were two steps ahead of the instruments and retained their sparkle. I listened to my Sicario playlist. I used these songs to determine if there is audible bass distortion. The flight exhibited none. Even at maximum volume, there was no audible distortion. Overall, the flight seems to have a sub-bass roll-off. Mid-bass is closer to neutral. There is good separation between sub-bass and mid-bass, resulting in fast transients and about average clarity in this region. Deeper insertion of this IEM may make a slight difference in bass rendition. It appears to me that the flight has fairly neutral mids with vocals that are clear and separate from instruments. In Orla Gartland's song Why Am I Like This, there's natural vocal grain and sibilance mixed into the track. The flight presented both without accentuating either. Even the sibilance seemed to be under control, similar to how I hear it on the neutral Moondrop quarks. Timbre of instruments appeared to be accurate. There was marginal melding between the drums and guitar. The vocals were two steps ahead of instruments. In Want You Back by Haim, the flight again demonstrated that it does not accentuate female sibilants. It was a neutral presentation similar to that of the quarks. At 8 seconds into the track, the primary vocalist says the word we and drags it out, making it sound gravelly. The flight did recreate this detail. There are two backup vocalists in this track. Both of them were clearly presented with their separate tonalities and voices. When the instruments played at maximum, I could still hear all three vocalists without difficulty. Timbre of instruments seemed accurate. There was minimal melding among them. In Superposition by Young the Giant, the flight properly recreated the ukulele and drums. The bass was underemphasized and seemed a little distant. The primary vocalist sounded smooth. His sibilance was not accentuated whatsoever. His voice was two steps ahead of the instruments. There's a backup vocalist whose voice is layered under the primaries. Most headphones and IMs I've tested cannot reveal this second voice, and the flight was no different in this regard. Between 1 minute and 10 and 1 minute and 20 seconds, there are supposed to be sharp intakes of breaths. The flight clearly presented this detail. Overall, the flight appears to have neutral or close to neutral mids. It does not accentuate sibilance or vocal grain, which is an issue I hear with a lot of chi fi products. The mids have average clarity, allowing multiple vocalists and instruments to become easily audible. 
The flight seems to have a fairly neutral trouble response with perhaps a very slight roll off at the upper end. In Skirtso for X-Wings, the flight allowed the brass and horns to cut through the other instruments. Their characteristic nasally sounds were clearly present. It was similar to the presentation on the Moondrop Quarks. I could not hear individual instruments but did hear group sets, and it was not difficult to separate one group set from another. The flight appears to have some width but no depth of verticality. In other words, instruments may seem further out into the wings, but not above, below, or forward or backward. This IEM will not present a 3D sound effect. In Flight from the City, the flight made the piano sound like it was about 6 feet away. Its bassy notes were noticeably underemphasized and had fast transients. I could hear the electric buzzing and pops and sizzles, details that are mixed into the bottom layer of this track. The cello was smooth and clear and had minimal melding with the piano. I could hear the creaking of wood on the penis bench and the shifting of the cello's weight. In Take 5 by the Day Brubeck Quartet, the flight presented the piano in the right, drums in the left, saxophone center, and the bass a few steps behind. There was clear separation among instruments and minimal melding of notes. The saxophone was smooth and seemed to have about the same amount of energy as on the Moondrop Quarks. The cymbals are struck at different positions, which should result in slightly varied tonalities from each cymbal strike. The flight was able to render that detail as well. The saxophone was about one step ahead of the other instruments. Overall, the flight seems to have a neutral or close to neutral treble presentation. There's good clarity in this region and good separation of treble-centric instruments. Nothing ever sounds harsh or piercing. Timbre seems to be accurate. I think the flight has, at best, average detail retrieval. Obvious details are easily audible, and the flight has sufficient clarity to help separate instruments and vocalists. But minute details will not always be recognizable, especially in complex tracks. Pops and sizzles, electric buzzing, sharp intakes of breaths, twangs of guitar strings, multiple vocalists, creaking of wood, shifting of cello's weights, scratchy or gruff character of vocalists, all of these details are perceptible on the flight. For a more quantitative test, I use the song New Light by Kazuki. This track has layers of details, including the sound of children playing, wind, rustling of grass, synth, piano, and footsteps. I count the number of footsteps I can hear in the first 60 seconds. The Blonde BL-03 presents 5 to 6 footsteps. The Tin Hi-Fi T2 and T2 Evo present 7 to 8 footsteps. The T2 Plus and the Blonde BL-05S present 6 to 7 footsteps. The Heidi's MS-2 presents 8 to 9. The Moondrop Starfield presents 6. The Moondrop Aria presents 7. The The Audio Legacy 2 provides 6 to 7 footsteps. The Moondrop Quarks provide 5 to 6. And The Flight presents 6 footsteps. I use the Aria and Starfield as the average performers in my tests. Any IEM that produces more or less footsteps gets judged accordingly. This means that on my scale, the Blonde BL-03 is below average and the T2 is above average. The flight is about average on this scale. IEMs and headphones have soundstage that is affected by ear pads and ear tips. Different materials and density does affect the perception of soundstage. Clamping force on headphones and insertion depth of IEMs also play a notable role. The original recording methodology and your particular track have significant play in all of this as well. In my experience, I would say that the flight soundstage is average. This IEM does present width. In other words, if your recording places instruments into the wings, the flight should be able to recreate that perception within reason. But the flight does not have depth or verticality you won't get the feeling that instruments are surrounding your head. As with my detail test, my soundstage test also has a scale. For the sake of comparison, let's talk about soundstage of other IEMs. The Tin Hi-Fi T2 and Heidi's MS-2 have above average soundstage. The Blonde BL-03 and 05S are average at best and perhaps slightly below average in soundstage based on proper fit. The Starfield, Aria, and Quarks are about average. The flight seems to be similar to the Aria, Starfield, and Quarks in regards to soundstage. Peacock and Linsoul do not say what the flight is supposed to sound like. At least, their initial press release and information I received is not very insightful about this. Peacock's marketing suggests an audiophile grade tuning. They claim to have worked on this IEM and its drivers for over two years. Audiophile tuning is an amorphous concept. Some people think audiophile sound is neutral signature. I am not a fan of this definition. 
I think any tuning that makes you happy and makes you want to keep listening to your music has an audiophile sound signature. If you prefer neutral, warm, analytical, bassy, that's totally up to you. Having said all that, I think that the flight's sound signature is mostly neutral. The flight seems to have a sub-bass roll-off. It's fairly obvious. This roll-off is not as prominent as with the Tin Hi-Fi T2, however. I think it is otherwise similar to the T2+. Plus. Of course, that's still not the same as neutral. Mid-bass is close to neutral, however. Drum impacts are clear with average decay. There is good separation between sub-bass and mid-bass. The bass slightly bleeds into the mids. The mids, in return, are neutral. Vocals are clear and two steps ahead of instruments. The flight does not accentuate sibilance over vocal grain. Timbre is always correct. Treble is also neutral, or close to it. The flight never becomes harsh or piercing, even at high volume. Treble instruments are clear without causing fatigue. The flight has average detail and soundstage. All of this coagulates into an IEM that may not turn heads to anyone who has sufficient experience with IEMs. However, if you're looking for a wireless earbud with an inoffensive sound signature, fairly neutral rendition, and average clarity, detail, and soundstage, then the flight might be a good option for you. Peacock's marketing says that the flight has 3D touch controls. I'm not sure what the 3D part of this is. Peacock does not have a manual for the flight yet. Linsoul did not have access to one either, so I experimented with the flight. What I found is that the flight's controls are easy, quick, and consistent. I use these earbuds indoors, outdoors, in air conditioning, and in humid environments. The controls always registered on the first try. A single tap will play and pause music. You can play and pause from either right or left earbud. Two quick taps on the right earbud will skip forward. Two quick taps on the left earbud will skip backwards. Three quick taps on the right earbud will activate voice command, such as Siri. Three taps on the left earbud seems to do nothing. If you hold your finger on the touch control on the right earbud, the volume will steadily increase. If you hold your finger on the touch control on the left earbud, the volume will steadily decrease. The flight's controls are pretty intuitive and responsive. However, you may accidentally trigger the controls when putting the earbuds in or taking them out. This was an issue I ran into frequently. I decided to compare the flight to a few IEMs. After all, since the flight is made for audiophiles, we might as well compare it to other such products. Well, at least the wired versions. Here, we will compare the flight against the Moondrop Quarks, Moondrop Aria, and the Abasso IT00. I use the stock accessories for all IEMs. I used neutral sources with the wired competition. I tested using my RME ADI2 DAC and the Modi Liquid Spark stack. I tried to volume match. I listened to my test playlist on Amazon Music HD. The quarks have more sub bass presence than the flight. This is fairly noticeable. Reverberation is very similar, however. Separation of sub bass for mid bass is slightly greater on the quarks. Mid bass impact, however, is very similar. The mids are very similar between the quarks and the flight. Both are close to neutral. Timbre of instruments is the same. Placement of vocals is nearly identical, and perhaps the quarks have a hint more separation of vocals from instruments. Decay of instruments is also hard to distinguish. Overall clarity in the mids region is a little bit more obvious on the quarks. The treble response is marginally different. The quarks seem to have a little bit more clarity and separation and just a hint more energy. Trouble detail was hard to distinguish. The nasally signatures of brass and horns was nearly identical. The flight provides a little bit more detail retrieval and about the same amount of soundstage as the quarks. The IT00 has noticeably greater sub bass emphasis than the quarks or the flight. Reverberation is longer on the IT00. Separation of sub bass from mid bass is a little bit more obvious on the IT00. Mid bass impact is significantly harder on the IT00. The mids are similar on the IT00 and the flight. Both IEMs present close to neutral mids. The flight adds just a hit more sibilance than the IT00, but this is nitpicking. Vocals on both IEMs are about two steps ahead of instruments. Timbre of instruments is identical. However, the flight is clearer in the mids region. Separation of vocals from instruments is easier to hear on the flight. 
the IT-00 has longer decay of mid-centric instruments and greater melding among them. Trouble response is slightly different. The flight has close to neutral trouble rendition. The IT-00 has a roll-off that seems to start around the mid-trouble area. Trouble clarity and separation of instruments is more noticeable on the flight. The flight and IT-00 appear to have similar detailed retrieval. The flight has slightly wider soundstage. The Aria has slightly greater sub-base presence than the flight. It's a bit more than the flight and a lot less than the IT-00. Separation of sub-base from mid-base is a little bit clearer on the flight. Mid-base impact is harder on the Aria. The mids are closer to neutral on the flight. The Aria has a greater sibilance push, particularly for female artists. Vocals appear to be a little clearer and more separated from instruments on the flight. The Aria provides greater bass bleed into the mids region, which also results in longer decay of instruments. Both the Aria and flight have similar treble response. They seem to be equally clear in this region. However, I think the Aria has a bit more treble energy in the mid treble area. The difference is not night and day, but is noticeable on an A-B test. The Aria places instruments closer to the ears. The flight and Aria have similar detail retrieval and soundstage. Overall, these tests indicate a few things. First, the flight seems to offer a different experience from other audiophile IEMs, at least in this test. Second, the differences are sometimes significant, as between the IT-00 and the flight, and sometimes differences are of minor degrees, as in the case of the quarks and the flight. The third indication is that the flight does seem to keep pace in regards to some popular IEMs. You're getting hints of neutrality, average clarity, separation, and soundstage from the flight, and all of this performance is in line with popular alternatives. As with anything else in life, you may dislike the flight for a multitude of reasons or you may find that its tuning and performance is what you've been hoping for in a wireless earbud. True wireless earbuds are easy to find online. Go to Amazon or AliExpress. You'll get dozens upon dozens of options, and most of them are probably the same driver and tuning packed into a different shell and brand name. I've used the Apple AirPods, AirPod Pro, the Sony WF-1000X, and various products from Jabra, Tautronics, and Anchor. Invariably, all of them have warm sound signatures with boosted bass. Some of these had sibilant, harsh vocals and an overemphasis on treble. The Flight is the first true wireless earbud I've heard that at least attempts a neutral sound signature with seemingly minimal coloration. The Flight has a sub bass roll off but fairly neutral mid bass. It has close to neutral mids and treble. Detail and soundstage is about average. The Flight is a fairly clear-sounding IEM, allowing you to hear individual instruments and vocalists without trouble. The Flight is easy to wear for hours at a time. It's probably among the more comfortable IEMs I've used. For my ears, the Flight sits securely. I don't think its shape will cause an issue for most people. Peacock says that the Flight has up to 6 hours of playtime with a single charge. My listening test resulted in about 5 hours of continuous play. The flight has decent accessories, though nothing eye-catching. It has a sturdy build and a unique design. All of this brings us to value. Initially, I had no idea what the flight would cost. I thought about what I'd pay for this product knowing its capabilities, and I concluded that I would pay up to $125 and could recommend this IEM at that price. But luckily, Linsoul released more information just a few days ago. The Kickstarter pricing brackets are as follows. $99 for the first 200 orders, $109 for any remaining orders, and the full retail price of $159. If I take everything into consideration, the build, accessories, features, and usability, I'd say that I had a rather pleasant experience with the flight. While it has a few issues, none of them I think are deal breakers. For example, I wish the charging case was a bit more sturdy. It was a little annoying when I accidentally activated the touch controls when I put the flight into my ears. Unfortunately, in order to get full insertion and seal, you have to press on the area where the touch sensors are located. Also, I think Peacock might be selling themselves short if they do not release a companion application for the flight. This seems to be par for the course, unfortunately. Most companies don't do it. Heck, Apple doesn't even do it even though they charge hundreds of dollars for their wireless earbuds. 
The flight's usability has been far more consistent and hassle-free than my experience with the AirPod Pro. For instance, the AirPods will randomly lose connection, refuse to charge, drain battery when in their charging case, and sometimes the noise cancellation feature will randomly fade in and out. You can imagine my frustration after all that. But the flight has not exhibited these issues. Of course, the flight does not have noise cancellation, so that concern will never be realized. Based on my experience, I would say that the flight is value at $99 and at $109. I'm a little hesitant recommending this IEM at $160, however. The reason for my reluctance is that the flight does not have a dedicated application. It would be great to have noise cancellation, but I suspect that would increase the price upwards of $200. Ultimately, the early adopter prices make the flight something worth seriously considering for audiophiles.